وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another episode from this series based around the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ وَدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord said, call upon me and I will answer you. There is a, a beautiful series of supplications that I want to share with you today. And I want to share with you really two supplications that contain seeking refuge from certain things. Asking Allah's protection and asking Allah's refuge. And we know what it means to ask refuge from Allah Azza wa Jal from just from, for example, uh, from uh, Surah uh, Al Falaq and Surah Al Nas. Kul a'udhu bi Rabbi Al Falaq. Kul a'udhu bi Rabbi Al Nas. Say, I seek refuge with the Lord of uh, the dawn or the daybreak. Say, I seek refuge with the Lord of mankind and so on. And I'm going to share two or three with you, insha'Allah ta'ala, from the most important of the supplications that contain isti'adha, seeking refuge with Allah Azza The very first one that I'm going to share with you is within the hadith. This hadith was narrated by a group of the Sahaba, among them Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anna and Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anna and others. The wording that al-Bukhari narrates in al-Adab al-Mufrad, it's not in his Sahih, but in al-Adab al-Mufrad, for this dua to, to keep safe from making a partner with Allah. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ushrika bika wa ana a'lam wa astaghfiruka lima la a'lam. O oh Allah, and again coming near to Allah through his names, I seek refuge with you that I make a partner with you while I know and I seek your forgiveness for what I don't know. Subhanallah, this is you know, subhanAllah, this is an amazing, amazing dua. Asking Allah Azza wa Jal that, Oh Allah, if I have made a part, I seek refuge with you, I ask you to protect me from making a partner with you. And this is something the prophets used to be scared of. And the prophets were protected. They used to be scared. Ibrahim, he said, وَجْنُبَنِي وَبَنِيَّ and al Asnam. O Allah, keep me and my children away from worshipping idols. And then there might be times where you might fall into something of making a partner with Allah Azza wa Jal and not realizing it. And this requires seeking forgiveness. So, O Allah, keep me safe. I ask your protection from making a partner with you while I know and I seek your forgiveness for anything that happened for me that I didn't know. And that's actually a theme that comes with in terms of sin, asking Allah for to forgive you for something that you don't remember or you're not sure about whether you, feel, whether you uh, might have fallen into it. From the amazing supplications that I want to share with you is the supplication, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al hammi wal hazan. ومن العجز والكسل ومن البخل والجبن ومن ضلع الدين وغلبة الرجال O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from الهم from الهم and الحزن الهم can be anxiety can be worry it can even be Becoming preoccupied with things that don't concern you, like humum al dunya, the concerns of the dunya. Like a person doesn't, he's not, he's being negligent in his religion because he's panicking over his worldly life, over his job or his family. It's all a kind of ham. And al hazan is sadness and depression. And we know how badly they affect your ibadah, how badly that affects your. The way that you worship Allah Azza wa Jalla. And we have an evidence for that which is indicated in the ayah, إِنَّمَا النَّجُوَى مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ 
ليحزن الذين آمنوا وليس بضارهم شيئا إلا بإذن الله Secret counsel or secret plans, secret gatherings and whisperings are only from the shaitan to make the believers sad, to sadden the believers. And you seek refuge with Allah from worry, anxiety, sadness, depression. Then you seek refuge with Allah from stinginess and cowardice. Stinginess, not being generous. And cowardice not being brave. And you seek refuge with Allah from inability and laziness. So the first was anxiety and depression. Then we had inability and laziness. Then we had stinginess and cowardice. Inability, al-ajz, is where you can't fix, you have a problem or a difficulty, but there's no current solution for you. Your ajz, you have no ability. You're unable. And al-kasal is where you have an ability, but you're too lazy to take advantage of it. Someone says, Wallah, I'm in such a difficult financial problem. I'm suffering financially. I don't know what to do. It's so hard for me. They're one of two things applies. Either they are ajiz or kaslan. Either they are unable, truly they are trying everything that is available to them, but they're just not able to fix it. Or, they are lazy. They actually could do something, but they're not finding the energy in themselves to be able to fix it. Al-ajz wal kasal. We said stinginess and cowardice. Wa min dala'iddain. Dala'iddain is a debt that you feel is so burdensome, you feel like you could never repay it. Like I've got this debt and I just do, wallah, I don't know how I can repay it. I can't imagine how I could ever repay this debt. Wa ghalabatir rijal, being overcome, by men, being overpowered by people, bullied, compelled, subjugated, forced. Subhanallah, the scholars, they say every problem that can ever happen to you in your life is found in this dua and you're asking Allah to keep you safe from all of them. So we have sadness, grief, worry, depression, anxiety, inability, laziness, cowardice, uh, stinginess, Debt and being overcome and overpowered by other people. Everything that could ever go wrong is found in there. There's nothing from the problems of life that's not found inside of that dua. And you're asking Allah to keep you safe from all of it. One last dua that I want to share with you in this episode, inshallah ta'ala, which is from the duas of seeking refuge. And it is an amazing, amazing uh, dua is to ask Allah Azza wa Jal to seek refuge with Allah Azza wa Jal from four things. From the things that you seek refuge, you say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa' wa qalbin la yakhsha' wa du'a'in la yusma' wa nafsin la tashba' O oh Allah, I seek your refuge from knowledge that does not benefit. SubhanAllah, how many of us gain knowledge, but that knowledge doesn't benefit? That knowledge might not benefit for one of two reasons, either because the knowledge itself is not beneficial. It's not ilmun nafi' it's not beneficial knowledge. Like the knowledge of haram, or the knowledge of the dunya that doesn't bring someone nearer to Allah. This is ilm, la yanfa' it doesn't really benefit you. Or because the person takes the knowledge, but doesn't act upon it. And you seek refuge with Allah from qalbin la yakhsha, from a heart that doesn't have khushu' a heart that isn't humbly submissive before Allah. How many of us complain about hardness of the heart? How many of us say, I don't have khushu' in my prayer? This is the dua for you. Wallah, oh I seek refuge with you from knowledge that doesn't benefit. And from a heart that doesn't have khushu' doesn't isn't submissive, isn't you know humble before Allah. Wa min nafsin, wa min du'a'in la yusma. In some uh, narrations, wa min da'watin la yustajabu laha. From a du'a that isn't heard. And when we say isn't heard, Allah hears everything. Inna hu Allah hears everything and knows everything. 
But a dua isn't heard means a dua that isn't answered. And that's found in some of the other narrations like the wording of uh, Imam Muslim. وَمِن دَعْوَةٍ لَا يُسْتَجَابُ لَهَا A dua that isn't answered. وَمِن نَفْسٍ لَا تَشْبَعْ And from a soul that isn't satisfied. How many people, subhanAllah, they say, Ya Allah, if you give this to me, I will be grateful. And that's a bad habit in dua. Like people say, oh Allah, if you give this to me, I will not ask you for anything else. And that's not right. And subhanAllah, a person says, oh Allah, give, 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 give. And Allah gives it to them, but they're not satisfied in the dunya. They say, oh Allah, if I had this much money, then Allah gives it to them and they're not satisfied. SubhanAllah, it's a, it's a musibah, it's a calamity to have a soul that isn't satisfied with what it has. So you ask Allah's refuge from knowledge that doesn't benefit, from, an, uh, from, uh, from a heart that doesn't have, that isn't submissive and isn't humble, from a soul that isn't satisfied, from a dua that isn't answered. In some of the narrations, it also mentions women, Aynin, La Tedma, from an eye that doesn't shed. Tears, and there are various different wordings of this dua found in different sources with different wordings. Sometimes one comes before the other and one is replaced with a different one. But broadly speaking, these are the features of the four particular ones that we find within, uh, within this dua. These are just some examples of comprehensive supplications. And I just want to conclude by just reminding everyone how important it is that we learn these supplications, as many as we can, even some of the smaller ones, and then build our way up to the bigger ones, so that we are not stuck of, you know, not knowing what to say, or asking Allah with our own words that might have shortcomings in them, and might have flaws in them, and even perhaps might have transgressions within them. So we want to conclude by asking Allah Azza wa Jal, Al-Hay, Al-Qayyum, Dhul Jalali, Wal Ikram, Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us what will benefit us, to benefit us with what He teaches us, to increase us in knowledge, to give us the ability to act upon it, to accept our supplications, and to make us from those who are humbly submissive to Him. That's what Allah made easy for me to mention, and Allah knows best. Wa salatu wa salam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do? a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel. Simple, like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users and imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.